What's up, YouTube? Name's Justin William. Um, I'm going to talk about animation for beginners, basic process, and learning for animation. So I know these days a lot of a lot of people are trying to get into art and animation, be it 3D or 2D or anything like that, but are having to go to school and take on a lot of debt, which is perfectly understandable and it's definitely doable. Matter of fact, I encourage it if you can depending on your talents and where you're at. Um, try to keep this really brief and to the point. Um, so, like I said, my name is Justin William. Um, anyway, you can check out my art. I left the description at the link below in the description line at justinwilliamart.com. So, moving on. So, for animation, for beginners, these days we have both traditional and digital. Um, I like both. If I had it my way, I'd definitely do more traditional animation. So from that, we'll, we'll start off with traditional animation. So if you guys don't know, um, traditional animation, you either have hole punch paper, all right, an animation style paper, and you can buy online. A good website is uh, lightfootanimation.com. They have both acne punch and hole punch. So this would be hole punch right here so you can see holes it's a little peg bar and this would be acne punch so you have the hole bar here in the middle and you have the peg bars right there right okay so you have your paper you got your peg bar pencils and paper of course and then you have your light tape like this right so this is a flat big light table it's huge but it's convenient because it's flat Okay, so we got that. So those are pretty much as far as basics go when it comes to uh, materials and stuff that you need. But uh, moving on from that, I'm sure everybody, you can Google anything these days. Moving on from that, let's talk about the actual animation itself and just starting off from the basics. So besides warming up and, you know, doing a little sketches here and there before you draw, uh, let's talk about roughing. So when it comes to roughing, a lot of animators, they'll do a rough drawing some are really neat even though they're supposed to be rough and some are just you know they're rough but as long as you get the idea of where the animation is supposed to go and you can like make out the character that's what they do for roughing so let's let's look at an example of roughing so here's an example of roughing right so here's a little animation that I've done I'm going to put it on 12 frames per second. So it's animation on a 2 is what they call in uh, production when it comes to animation production. So here's a little rough. So you can see the drawings are really rough, right? I'll go back and forth. Really rough. You just got basic anatomy, you know, like with your shapes and stuff like that. Sorry, my, my drawings are pretty crude. They're not the best. But you get the idea. He's running, right? You got the weight. He steps down. Some aren't that best. I need to go back and change up. But you can see... You get the idea. He's running. Bam. He's got that step. Right? Can we put that foot down? Another one there. And like I said, some of these might be out of order of drawings or some are just rough and I need to change. So I'm a beginner just like everybody else out there that's watching this if you guys are beginners. So you have rough drawings, right? But you get the idea what's going on. You see him running. And so this is what you call a pencil test or a line test. Professionals call it, right? So you do the drawings, you flip through the animations, right? You have your drawings, you flip through them. Like while you're drawing, you'll flip through them. You see the actual motion of it, right? Step. So he's taking a step. Right? So they call it flipping or rolling. They call it rolling. And then you scan them in. And if you're going to scan in your drawings, I definitely get an automatic document feeder if you don't have a capturing device or you put the paper down and capture it. I get an automatic document feeder that can fit this size paper. It's almost like a A4 paper. Not 11 by 17, but almost A4 size. So you call that rolling. But you get the idea. If I do the line test, I put it together, you can actually see the action, right? So it starts off slow and then it comes in faster. It zooms in. He's coming to the camera. Camera sweeps around and behind him. For a Louisville, low angle shot, and then that's his foot coming down, right? Pauses. That foot's about to go down. 
Bam. Foot's going down. It's got all that power and gravity. It's going to take off. Cause an impact. And these are all keys. Only the very, very beginning, like maybe first three kiloseconds of this are the in-betweens. So that's roughing. And another example of roughing is uh, animating Taka Nakamura. Right? So if anybody's up on animation, you know about the Sword of the Stranger done by Studio Bones. And Yutaka Nakamura is one of the lead animators. And the work that he's done is, I mean, the guy's just amazing. He's a veteran animator. Does some amazing stuff. Let's uh, pull it up here. Let's pull it up here. No, that's not what I want. Bear with me, guys. Okay, so here's a post by LaShawn Thomas. And if anybody doesn't know about LaShawn Thomas, he's a... It's really known for his uh, character designs and um, directing of animation productions here in the U.S. So, um, Sean Thomas, he did a post, and as you can see, it's old, but he did a post by Yutaka Nakamura, and as you can see, the drawings are rough, right? He has rough drawings here, and then after the rough drawings, the animation production team, they do the cleanup, they do the compositing, the background, and I'm not going to go into that. But that's where we get into learning. So his process, and then we also get into learning. So you know, you can learn from these these different animators, right? So as you can see, you talking about community is really good at choreography and um, character design and action scenes, right? And that's what I'm into. So I study some of his some of his animation. And as you can see, here's another one. It's really rough, rough drawings, basic, you know, blocking. Some people call it blocking. Some people call it rough. But still, the drawings are really fluid. And you can see the action, right? Even the special effects, the sparks from the swords. And then after that, you have the cleanup artists. They go and clean up the drawings to add in the details. You know, you have the in-betweeners adding in-betweens if they don't want it to just be the keyframes for the um, for the pacing of the animation. And so when it comes to learning, you know, look up your favorite artists. Look up your favorite uh, animators. And see how they animate, you know, what they do. If you like mechanical design and mech animation, look up mech anim animators that are known for doing mechanical designs. If you like action scenes where there are people fighting, look up animators that do really amazing fight scenes and choreography and stuff like that. Right? And perspective, you know what I mean? Look at that shot right there, low angle shot. He's coming into the camera after being hit. You got some like acrobatic stuff going on there where he flops over to dodge a sword. And he spins up on his, onto his hand and he runs into the camera. I mean, look at that. It's amazing. And even though it's realistic at the same time, it's still imaginative, right? Because with animation, you know, you can use your imagination. Whatever you can imagine, you can put down on that paper so you don't have to worry about real life. That's the, that's the cool thing about animation. And also, with along with watching animation, you know, Try not to get too caught up in watching animation. You don't want to spend all your time watching because the time you spend watching, you could be doing what you're watching. You could be animating. So another thing I like to do is I like to buy art books of animation. So these are like keyframes, and sometimes they'll have the uh, keyframes, and they'll also have the uh, storyboards of the animation, the layout design. Right? So this is a art book of Full Metal Alchemist, The Brotherhood. Amazing animation. Awesome special effects and fight scenes and action. Highly recommend getting it. And then uh, another animator, Hironori Tanaka, a young guy, but amazing animator. I mean, this guy's like a star, right? He's like a star among animation. He worked on this. And so as you can see, you can see the different frames in animation, right? They have the keyframes, and then some. sometimes they have the in-betweens, right? So you can see that, some of that. Let's find like an action one really quick here. Let's find an action scene. Let's see. So see, this might not be the coolest, but here you can see, right? You can see as it's going, one shot to the next. And so those are actual drawings. But the good thing about art books and watch and studying still frames, you can put the action together yourself. And so that'll help your mind. Okay, I'm drawing this, he has this shot. What do I want him to do next in the next shot or the next keyframe? So that, that enables your mind to put stuff together, right? Because animation is the illusion of motion. Right, so you draw these frames and you put them all together. You roll the picture, 
and allows you to put put the pictures together even as you're animating so that allow you to become a better animator and be smoother so that's my uh, two cents on animation for you know process of animation and then uh, learning for animation so studying what to, and how to learn how to animate stuff like that so watch everyday life watch uh, you know your favorite animators look at books how things move and then take that and make maybe you can make it more exaggerated maybe you can make it uh slow or you know just really i mean just you can go crazy with animation You're limitless so thanks for watching um i hope i inspired you guys pick up a pencil or a stylus and a tablet and draw and animate um if you click on the right of the screen the little eye icon the little bubbles pop up and you can subscribe to my channel and I highly recommend subscribing to uh, LaShawn Thomas' channel because he gives a foreign exchange, as he calls it, of uh, animating here in the U.S. And then letting you know that, you know, most of our animation is done over in South Korea. And it gives you both sides of the U.S. and Asian, how they do things in producing animation step by step from each department. Whether it's layout or actual animation or, you know, compositing, stuff like that. So it's a really good example for beginners wanting to learn to get into animation and both the business side a little bit too. So thanks for watching. Um, in the description below, there's also the links to this posting by LaShawn Thomas for Yutaka Nakamura. And you can also check out my art at justinwilliam.com. Again, that's justinwilliamart.com. Excuse me. Justinwilliamart.com. Check me out. And uh, thanks for watching.